Hi students, this is your makeup session for our live session on Thursday, I'm sorry, on Tuesday, September 15th. So the first thing that you will need to do in class today is to click on this link that is in your, um, in your live session to go over to quizzes and play a quiz over there, play a game over there um, for receptors. That's one of the things that we've been working on is figuring out what receptors go with what senses. And so this will be a quiz that you can take to see how well you're doing on that. When you're finished, when you're finished with class today and you've taken your quizzes quiz, mark this assignment as turned in. I think it actually says mark as completed. So you need to check that button so that I know you're finished and I can check what your score is. You're gonna be able to continue to use that quiz um, so that you can study with it um, if you wish. Now let's get started with what we did in class yesterday. The first thing that we did was take a look at this pyramid. This is what we did in class last Thursday. So that would be September 10th. If you haven't gone through and checked your um, homework for um, the Wednesday before, so about a week ago, uh, this is an excellent tool for you to use to check that table that you filled in from your reading. So this would be a great way to help you go back and check uh, to make sure that you got what you needed um, in terms of what are the different stimuli called, um, what are the senses that go with those stimuli, and what are the receptors um, along with your different senses. Today in class, we spent some time um, looking at the types of sensory receptors found in complex organisms. We did that with your quiz, with your quizzes quiz. Um, and so now we're gonna work on this basic cause and effect relationship between a stimulus and a response. So this is the happy hiker human and Baloo the bear. And I'm gonna go through this with you so that you can see um, some basic information um, about happy hiker human and Baloo the bear. So when the happy hiker human sees this bear, um, there are several types of stimulus or several types of stimuli that the happy hiker human receives. So the first is electromagnetic and the eyes receive the electromagnetic stimulus. The uh, retina has rods and cones. So the receptors are the rods and cones on the retina. They take in that information from the light that is bouncing off of Baloo the bear. And then the rods and cones send that signal through the optic nerve or via the optic nerve to the brain. So here's the brain of the happy hiker human. Usually, obviously, that would be inside the happy hiker human's head, but that's getting a little bit crowded in there. So I've got it drawn out here so you can see a little bit better. The happy hiker human is also getting a mechanical stimulus and the ear is picking that up because Baloo the bear is roaring. So Baloo the bear says roar. And here's the mechanical stimulus, the sound waves. Those hit the ear, they go through the parts of the ear and inside the cochlea in the fluid that's in the cochlea, there are little hair cells that line the cochlea and that fluid moves with the vibrations, with the mechanical vibrations. And so those hair cells are triggered or stimulated. And so they pick up the sound and they send their message to the brain through the auditory nerve. Once inside the brain, the brain is going to figure out very quickly um, does it need to have a very basic response? This is a hardwired response. So this is a fight or flight response. And so once the information for I'm seeing what could be a threat, I hear what could be a threat. So the brain is going to decide very quickly without processing any memories or anything else. The brain is going to decide, oh, this could really be a threat and I'm going to have to do something about it. So um, the brain says, this could be danger. And so the brain sends out signals also through different nerves. So here's a nerve, probably the vagus nerve, vagal nerve, going to 
a heart cell. Here's some tissue. So this is looking at levels of organization. So the nerve goes to this cell. All of these um, heart cells are getting the signal. And here is the heart. So the happy hiker human was enjoying this hike through the woods, but now the heart is beating really fast so that it can get oxygen that the um, lungs are taking in because the muscles around the lungs are um, receiving signals from the brain as well to move faster so that more air is coming in and so more oxygen can go into the blood. Um, the heart is getting the signal to pump faster so that that oxygen that's coming into the lungs is going to be able to get into the bloodstream and out to the muscles very quickly. And then here on this diagram, there's there are more nerve cells that will go out to different muscle cells or muscle tissues um, or actually complete muscles, so an organ here, um, within the happy hiker human's body. Here's the hamstring. Here is one of the quadriceps. Here is the gastrocnemius. So these are the muscles, or these are some of the muscles, not nearly all of the muscles, that are being told by the brain to get ready for the possibility of fighting or fleeing. So that's a hardwired response. And that's very similar to the response that I still have each time that I'm weed eating in my backyard and I see a snake. So um, I still will jump, I still will tense up, um, but then I have some time, this is where this part comes in, then I still have some time for my memory to kick in um, and I can go, oh, that's just Jake and going about your way, Jake, and I just go back to weed eating. But I still have that hardwired or it's called an innate, I-N-N-A-T-E, an innate response to seeing something that could be danger. Humans don't want to be bitten by snakes out in nature. And so um, humans have that response. Um, we see something that looks like a snake. We kind of jump. Um, we, we are vigilant about it. And then our brain processes those signals through memory. So if we look at the happy hiker human and consider the memory part here, um, the happy hiker human may decide, I have got to get out of this place. I've got to flee right now. I've got to run. Um, they're scared. They don't know anything else to do. They really don't have any other memories to pull from that tells them what they should do. So they may run. So all the muscles are moving. The brain's sending the signals. Let's get out of here. Um, we, we really don't know what's happening. The sun is setting on my life. I've got to run and see if I can have some hope of survival. That's a possibility. Or maybe the happy hiker human has seen um, some various movies or some TV shows or something, survival shows, and they go, oh, hey, I'm going to play dead. This might work. So there's some memory there. They've seen some stuff. And so they, they don't know anything else to do. So they try to play dead. Or maybe they just faint. Who knows? But we'll say, oh, yep, they're playing dead. Then the last thing that the happy hiker human might do is to say, oh, I saw that video this summer that was going around social media where those girls had been on a hike and some bear came up to one of them. And she stood really still for a really long time. And the bear like sniffed around her and then finally wandered off. So the happy hiker human might decide to do that. Since we're talking about Harriet the hiker, who is quite um, experienced at hiking, and she's been on lots of hikes, she's taught classes, she's been to classes, um, she might remember, oh, I'm supposed to put my arms up in the air, I'm supposed to look much larger than what I am, so the bear sees me and decides, oh, I'm not interested, and wanders off. So it depends on what memories we have stored, if we have any memories stored, as to what we might do after our brain has gotten us ready to fight or flee. Because we might not need to do those things, or we might not know anything different to do. And so um, we might not have any memories to help us process the signals. It just depends based on what our previous experiences have been. 
we can also look at this from the perspective of Baloo the bear. And so Baloo doesn't have great eyesight, but Baloo may have seen the happy hiker human. So there's some electromagnetic radiation being picked up by Baloo's eyes. So that would be the rods and cones also um, on the retina in Baloo's eyes. Those rods and cones use the optic nerve to send the message to the brain. Um, Baloo has a really good sense of smell. And so there may be some chemicals coming from uh, the happy hiker human, or if the happy hiker human has a backpack that has food in it, Baloo may smell this stuff. So if Baloo has been around people before, well, first of all, if Baloo, uh, when Baloo first gets this information, Baloo may say, ooh, this could be a threat. And so Baloo may stand up and kind of look to see what the threat might be. As Baloo's brain processes, if Baloo has encountered a human with a backpack before and that backpack had food in it, then Baloo the bear may say, oh, human, that's lunch. Yum, I get to have a free lunch from the human. I just need to go get that backpack. And so Baloo the bear may also understand that there is some kind of um, of behavior or response based on his previous encounters with a human. If Baloo the bear has never seen a human before, then probably there's not going to be this association with lunch and the bear may either be curious or just decide the happy hiker human is of no consequence and go on about his or her business. So here on this side, this is some of the notes that I just went through and talked about. As you go through this uh, slide presentation, there are smaller segments, so you can see a little bit easier with more notes. Um, I went through all of this with you, um, and so you can access it with just kind of bullet point notes over here. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is this last slide. So a response to a stimulus involves two things. There's an immediate response, which is innate, and there's also a conditioned response. So one that relies on memories of other encounters, similar encounters, maybe warnings, maybe things that they've seen, maybe imaginations, maybe stuff that you've heard, been taught. So there has to be some kind of stored information for this conditioned response. So there's a response to stimulus, will almost always involve both an immediate response and a conditioned response. Okay, so um, you have access to these slides and so you can take a look at those in, um, there's the link in Google Classroom in the live session to these slides and so you can go back and see these as you need to.